been a while since our last budget PC build, but we're back. I'm so proud of what's been put together here as it not only looks incredible, but it powers through 1080p gaming like nobody's business. PC prices are not the most wallet friendly at the moment, but if you are itching to get in on the PUBG action, you can still get a lot for your money. Now the idea behind this system was to create something that's going to be perfect for budget gaming and that led us towards the Ryzen platform as the value you can get from these processors is insane and the one we've got here is the Ryzen 1300X. This quad core chip is a fantastic choice when it comes to value and you're also free to overclock it on a much cheaper motherboard too with the Asus Prime B350 Plus allowing for easy overclocking while looking absolutely fantastic in the process. Something that was also really unexpected for me was just how effective the stock AMD cooler can be as the entire PC was not only quite under load, but it even allowed for some modest overclocking as well. Now obviously the heart of a gaming PC is going to be the graphics card, and the one we've got here is the GTX 1050 Ti as it offers a great sort of balance between price and performance, but I would advise that you maybe cut back a little bit and get whatever the cheapest brand is at the time of checkout. And if you do need to drop the price a little bit further, you can of course grab a regular 1050 and save yourself some cash in the process. Now unfortunately, RAM is really difficult to buy at the moment because the prices have pretty much doubled from what they were last year. And as such, I'd recommend going for the cheapest DDR4 kit of 8GB RAM that you can. Speeds above 2400 MHz could certainly help. But I've used my trusty set of Ballistic Sport here and despite the slower speeds it works great and offers a brilliant value proposition when compared against faster sets. Storage is handled by a 250GB Western Digital Blue SSD and it's very easy to cut back and grab a hard drive instead but I'd strongly advise against it as the responsiveness and boot speed is definitely worth the investment. If you do need more capacity, then I would just get the SSD now and then grab an additional hard drive when you get your next paycheck. The final piece of the puzzle lies with the power supply and I've gone for a 450 watt Cougar GXS. It's great value, very quiet and is extremely energy efficient. Now the build itself was remarkably quick and easy. It was all done in the Fantex P300 and I have to say, this case is without a doubt my case of the year. For just under £60 you're getting something that looks as good as this, but it's still really easy to build in and it accommodates all your hardware with ease. Everything is exactly where you'd want it to be and I don't think there was a single difficulty that I came across which is really refreshing at the budget end of the market. Performance wise, the PC provides an amazing amount of punch. At 1080p, the PC crushes eSport titles like CSGO, and even in more intense titles like Mass Effect Andromeda and Battlefield 1, you're still getting average frame rates at the magical 60fps mark on high settings. PUBG is still in early access at the time of filming, and the final release is bound to increase FPS, but even in its current unoptimized state, you're still getting really playable frame rates, and that's before you dial down the settings to medium. But this is so much more than just a gaming PC though, this isn't even just a general use PC. This thing with its quad core processor is going to be fantastic across a range of applications. And while the Cinebench score of 551 might not sound that impressive, I was actually able to edit 4K video in Resolve a lot better than you might expect. ProRes files played back pretty much flawlessly, and even H.264, even though it definitely wasn't flawless, it worked a lot better than I expected. Overclocking is actually on the cards too, as this system overclocks on the stock cooler to 3.9GHz without too much fuss. If you're going to be doing things like rendering, or anything that's using the CPU at 100% for a long period of time, then I probably would advise swapping it out for something else. But if you're just gaming, then what we've got here is absolutely fine, with the results showing a 10% gain in both synthetic and real world performance, and after pushing the graphics card a little bit further too, 3D Mark Time Spy did see a decent jump. But if you're expecting big performance gains in real world titles, then I wouldn't get your hopes up, though in CPU bound titles you are bound to see an improvement. So I really love this system and I honestly think it's going to be great for anyone that's in the market for a budget PC that's going to be able to crush it for years to come. I'll leave all the links down in the description below for things like current pricing and if you have got any feedback, things you like, things you don't like, 
Hit me up in the comments down below, that's where I'll be for quite a long time. If you want to see a video that's going to be complete desk setup, then that's also coming with this PC, so stay tuned for that. A massive thank you to everyone that has provided parts for this system, and of course to Asus RG for sponsoring the channel as always, and I'll see you next time.